webcam, it's just not a uh, GoPro. It's not working as well. So I have to use my computer one, which is that's okay. Less. Yeah, I know, but it's it's not as helpful as it could be. Uh, <laughs> but that's all right. We'll make it work. All right. Hi there. This is Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More Worldwide TV Network, IT 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, iHeart Radio, Spotify, Pandora, all the platforms around the world. And this is a special holdover from the CES 2021 show. I love finding new products and brands and things like this. This company, Rise Gardens, I found by accident. And unfortunately, too bad we're not there in person to see a lot of these things because I would love to see it in person. So who are you? Where'd you come from? Because I like to start that way. Obviously, it's Hank Adams from Rise Gardens. But Hank, tell us, how did this how did this everything come about with Rise Gardens? Because this is great of what I saw so far. Yes. Well, thank you, Brian. As you mentioned, Hank Adams, uh, founder and CEO of Rise Gardens. Um, so uh, where did the product come from? Uh, that's an interesting backstory uh, in that I did not start in consumer electronics uh, or gardening or anything related to this. I, I spent uh, 30 years in uh, sports technology businesses. So my previous company was Sport Vision and we were the, the company that invented that uh, virtual yellow line in football. Oh, um, how cool. People, yeah, people know and love and uh, some other really great sports tech products like in baseball, we tracked every pitch thrown and we could put trails behind it. And every, uh, you know, you'll see the little virtual strike zone now basically in every baseball game. Um, that was our technology. Uh, a little bit more infamously, the glowing hockey puck back in the day was a Sport Vision product as well, um, for those that, that might go back that far. But uh, yeah, so I was in sports tech for a very long time. Um, loved it. I have three boys. They thought it was the greatest job ever um, that, that their dad could have. Uh, and then um, it was venture backed. We, we eventually sold the business and that was back in 2016. And I spent uh, a couple years doing some hard research and, and hard thinking. I'd, done, I'd been involved in three sports tech businesses. And I said, you know, I, I don't know if I want to do it again. I actually want to pursue something that I, that I really love. And I love sports, but, you know, I, I've always been interested in food and cooking and you know, healthy food and its impact on our own health. And, and I really want to do something um, related to food production. Uh, I looked around pretty hard. I did some investigating of, of, in fact, I built a miniature, you know, kind of a miniature version of a big indoor growing facility. So, you know, one of these indoor, um, you know, farms basically. And I looked pretty hard at that, but I wasn't crazy about the economics of it. Um, and in the meantime, I was playing around with, with home hydroponic systems um, that were commercially available just to teach myself more about hydroponics and growing food and, and you know, the healthy food and implications of it and all that. And I really didn't like the systems that I found out there. And so that's when I made the pivot and said, you know what, I, maybe I should build something for consumers <clears throat> so that they can grow food in, in their own home. And so that's how we landed uh, on Rise Gardens. And we spent several years prototyping and building and testing and scrapping it and redoing it. And we finally ended up with uh, the product you see behind me. I love, I love that story because I'm not a sports guy unless I was watching Tiger Woods. And, you know, uh, one of our things that we do for, um, uh, for Sportamix is we, um, you've heard of Lee Steinberg. So Lee is our president on the world of sports and with his number one, client, Patrick Mahone. So we do all of that worldwide. So we get all of that. And I always tease, tease Lee, Lee, my numbers are bigger than yours and I'm not even in the sports world. And we just start <laughs> laughing. But it always goes to everybody has that side hobby that you would probably never pay attention to. Yours was, I guess that you would see this avenue where we are today. And one of the reasons why I wanted to chime in on this is because I love what you created, what I've seen so far. And I love the backstory because it is about growing your own food now. And it is getting back to basis of that. Uh, I have water products that I found, the stuff that we're doing for the Dreamweaver Artist Ranch, where a lot of the artists have lost their homes and things like that, tiny houses. When it comes to that, the 36 acres that we're using out of the 550, um, 10 acres is just to grow our own food. 
And yeah. uh, in Northern California, in the town of Redding, it's, uh, it's never had a fire on it. The soil is very fertile. It's near Mount Shasta. So you know that's wine country soil. You need that. So having right. three elements of and not having contaminated soil is very, very important. So when I saw this, I'm like, what is this? I've never heard of this before. And then I said, I talked to my partner. He goes, do you know about this company? He goes, yeah, in my resource, I found them, but, uh, but I couldn't find a phone number. And if we can't find a number, we can and let it go because it's hard to reach people. I said, well, let me try there at CES. I'm like, I think this will be great for what we're doing, what exposing it to the audience of people that are starting to grow their own food. Uh, this yeah. is important because in the world that we live in today, this is getting back to where we really need to be. And congratulations for that because this is something great. You're like four for four when it comes to all the stuff that you're doing. <laughs> well, we'll see. It's it's you know it's still early days, but it's it's been doing well. And um, you know, a, a couple things I pulled from that that uh, what you just mentioned. One is we got to make our phone number more prevalent, uh, more prominent on our website, and make sure that people can call us. But um, yeah, so you know, in terms of getting back to food and and growing your own food, it it. It's true, right? I mean, Michael Pollan is the one who turned me on to this, you know, food movement and his book, Omnivore's Dilemma, really made a big impact on me. Yeah. But I'm, I, you know, I think about some of the, the sort of maxims he says, which is, you know, don't eat anything that has ingredients your, you know, your grandmother didn't use or that you can't pronounce, you know, uh, in your foods, you know, use real foods. And you know, back in the day, we did grow a lot more of our own food. It was more local. Our farms were polyculture. You know, we didn't have these gigantic corn and soybean operations and, you know, CAFOs where they sort of raise our animals in, in frightening conditions. You know, they were much more sort of wholesome polyculture, you know, rich environments. And uh, obviously we've gotten away from that. And, you know, most of our our produce, our vegetables at least, are grown in the Central Valley of California. And, you know, the water table wasn't built for that. Our, you know, uh, the water runoff that's coming, you know, the, the highly fertilized water runoff that's coming out of there and the, the drop in uh, water tables and the fact that we're shipping our food, you know, our average head of lettuce goes 1500 miles to the consumer's plate. It, it's, those just aren't sustainable. You know, that's just not a sustainable uh, food system. And that's, that's what initially pushed me to get into this. Um, but now that I'm into it, you know, you realize that, that everybody who is trying to sort of say, hey, I want to source my food more locally, um, you know, they're finding their way to us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because our system, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it more later, but you can add levels to it after the fact, right? You can buy it as a one level and add a second or a third level. We're getting loads of people, like 25% of our, of our unit orders last uh, in the last month were people adding levels to their existing gardens because I, I, I can only presume they started and thought, this is really fun, I wanna grow more and they've added you know, more to it. So um, yeah, I think it is tapping into uh, something that people are really interested in doing and for good reason. Um, you know, the food that we grow, when you cut it and put it on your plate and you make a salad, which I'll do, you know, for lunch, right? When we finish this interview, it's got a hundred percent of its nutrients, right? I mean, it's packed with nutrients. It's super healthy. There's been no pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, none of that sort of stuff. That lettuce that you're buying, even from the most expensive, you know, organic grocery store uh, you can find is probably over a week old. And yeah. it does just, you know, it loses over half of its nutrients in the first 48 hours. So you just, you can't, you can't beat local. You just can't beat it. Um, and so, you know, we encourage people, look, when, when it's in season, go to your farmer's market. Absolutely. But, you know, at the same time, you grow year round with, with our systems and it's really a great way to supplement your diet. Well, you're really like this, Hank, then, because what you just said, the reason why uh, we started this what, three years ago, I, I officially started at May 2018. Uh, one, I picked Biden and Harris that same month. And then I started to focus that same month right up on October 3rd of our Dreamweaver Artist Ranch, which was for, because what you just said is true. 
We knew the climate was changing, whether people believe it or not. I don't care. I have the numbers. I'm not beholden to any corporation. I can do what I want to do. But it's about helping those people getting back to that. Uh, I have 13 co-hosts. They're all women. Uh, eight out of the 13 are in the world of fitness. So you know we have to eat properly because they're always training. And, you know, four of them are one's Miss America, one's Miss Russia, United States, <laughs> the first African American, Miss North Carolina, USA. These are all my co hosts. So, you know, they have to not only look good, they've got to eat good. And now their families are doing that. So, what we want to do, and I want, definitely want to do something with, with Rise Garden, is we are, we will be probably the first one in the country that's sustainable, environmentally friendly, and the first test model for net zero meaning no plastic or anything on there, except with the exception of certain things, little components that you can't get away with. But we want to incorporate rubber or things like that. And you talked about water. So imagine this. We have 1914 water rights. We have much water. We have our own hydro plant. How many, how many people of color can tell you that for, for one? But in general, how wow. many can tell yeah. you that? So you know we have our water. We already have that on our, on our thing. And our realtors and our friends who are creating our small little tiny houses, our tiny breweries, our little wineries and our tiny restaurant, they're our firefighter friends. And the reason we chose wedding is because of how everything was changing and the spiritual aspect of that. So when I talk to George Clooney or if I'm talking to Oprah, I'm telling them things that they're wanting to do. So when you come out and we have one of your rise guards, you're gonna see exactly why we chose it, why we created it. And that's why I wanted to do the interview because I want to tell everybody about this. And as you know, when it was a, a run on uh, food a month from now, last year, we were already prepared yeah. for that. I had, we've had our hand, own hand sanitizers for five years. We have water gen, the Israeli country that captures the air, uh, water out of the air. We already have these companies that I found last year. It's just finding the last little ingredients like your company because we want to have we want, it's going to be what it's like, like Disneyland. I always said, we we're a toss up between Sundance Film Festival and Disneyland. What's not running? Well, it's called movie reviews and more. So I knew, you know, there weren't gonna be any movie theaters, unfortunately. So I could foresee yeah. what's gonna happen with Disneyland and we're right in the middle. We weren't affected by anything. It was our best year because of the stuff that we found and people making that run on food. That's why, uh, that's why we, 2020 was our best year and our job is to help these people look at these other companies like yours and say, hey, this is what we have to do because the world is changing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's super impressive that you, uh, that you got all that stuff in place even before the pandemic, right? I'm I mean, on record saying all these things going back yeah. to 2018 and my co-host would tell you, my friends will tell you, they go, how did you know this? I'm like, I knew everything what was going to happen. I just didn't know what the virus was going to be. And I didn't see the run in the Capitol. But besides that, I saw everything else. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that was very, very prescient because, you know, all that did come to pass uh, and it affected us as well in, in a number of ways. I mean, the first way was that we had, you know, a huge run on our on our systems, um, you know, in the spring and it lasted sort of into the summer. Um, and then, you know, we we got sort of uh, back on under control, like from our our. Um, you know, our ability, our supply chains and all that sort of stuff, because it was hard, you know, one to just anticipate that much demand, but yep. two, you know, we're trying to get, in, you know, materials that, uh, you know, we're very specific about, and we care a lot about what goes into our gardens. And, you know, it was just hard to source things at that time. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, we're seeing it a bit again, because a lot of national governments are putting restrictions on, you know, certain items, because they want to save it for, you know, protective equipment or whatever the case may be. And, and so, you know, we're, we're seeing supply tighten yet again. Um, hopefully it'll be short lived and, you know, vaccines and all that sort of, you know, loosen up, uh, you know, people's concerns about um, supply chains and, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so it, it affected us in a number of ways when it hit. Um, but it was, you know, we felt good in that we were able to provide something that, that gave people you know, some sense of, you know, food security that they would, you know, not have to go to the grocery store to pick up, you know, fresh vegetables and herbs and all of that. And I think also we saw a lot of families come and buy the system and, and, you yeah. know, we have a Facebook group that's very active. And so we see what people are doing and we talk to our fans all the time and we do, you know, Facebook 
lives and Instagram lives. And so we get a lot of engagement. Their kids don't really know much about where their food comes from. They've been sort of detached from, you know, what the, you know, how their food is grown and what they should be eating and all that sort of stuff. And so a lot of families have adopted it as something to do, you know, during this pandemic and during the lockdown and while teaching their kids about growing food. Well, and one of the things I like about this is, is the planning, the mindset, and you knew, you saw that there was a need for this. During a pandemic, you saw that. And again, I tell people now, I said, last year I was saying, this is not going away for five years, vaccine or not, this is the new, what we have to do. And so another four years, and I know in the world of entertainment, um, when I was reaching out to Norwegian Cruises, one of my co-hosts was a performer on there. I said, we're building what Red Rock has, what the Hollywood Bowl has, everything is outdoor. We have retractable roofs for our stuff, for our big, huge barn that, that a band could play in. Because of the 36 acres that we're using, we only want 200 people on it. That's the most that we can have. We have our electric vehicles that pick people up from the airport. So all of this is put in. We know people will be coming from around the world to, to see what we're going to be showcasing. If Ryan shows us for movie reviews and more and the Art de Montague for Dreamweaver, the artist ranch, there's a reason why we need to have this. And that's why a lot of the companies like LG you know, you know them as computers, phones, and, and televisions, but, you know, John Taylor liked us. Hey, we want to we wanna give you solar panels. This is LG because no one knows they're in the solar yeah. panel business. So when I found Segways because they ignored me and it took me a year to get them. So they gave me the Segway. It's got the AI technology because AI technology can now plant. My guy, Jack Gillian, who was with Segway, he's come aboard with us on the planning aspect and he's Irish. So this will be actually interesting. So think about that. AI technology planning 24 hours throughout the year. That's what I'm seeing because this is the way that it's got to be. Yeah. 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 And, you know, we're uh, building some AI into our system as well, you know, partially by borrowing from, you know, Alexa and, and integrating our system with Alexa, which you know, lets you do some some commands and natural language commands and such, you know, for, for your own stuff. But also, you know, you can get, uh, you know, cameras that we're working on putting cameras on our system and uh, actually do some diagnostics on your plants, right? Like what, do I, what is, there a, is there a vitamin deficiency, you know, for them or, you know, some nutrient issue or a pH issue or something like that. And you can, you know, you can use AI to do some, some diagnostics for you. Um, but certainly, you know, planning out what you're going to plant and, you know, your sort of the, 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 the diet that you want your family to eat, you can use some, some AI around that too, down the road. So there's some really cool stuff coming. Hey, talk about, um, we got about seven minutes. Talk about a couple of things. Why do people like rose gardens? What is it? So what are some of the comments that they've said to you? Yeah, so um, I mentioned already that a lot of families like it because they, they you know, are interacting with their kids. And um, we have one woman, she's a yoga instructor, Amy Tenney. She's, she's you know, awesome, super fit. Uh, and she's been using it with her daughter every week. Her daughter cooks uh, a meal and they base it around their rice garden. So she comes and cuts the lettuce and cuts the herbs and pulls, pulls some tomatoes and you know, she'll make, uh, she'll make a salad for, you know, their, their meal. Uh, and so that is definitely something that people are using it for and seem to enjoy about it. Um, you know, I have to say it's, it is primarily a food production system. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll, we see kind of two different, you know, groups of people come to our system. Um, one is gardeners and they love growing, you know, I, live in the Chicago area and you know frankly the seasons are tough here because you know long winters we don't have a super long growing season uh, by comparison to those of you in you know California and warmer climates and and even when in the summertime it gets too hot to grow a lot of plants you know lettuces and spinach and you know a lot of those things don't like it too hot so you know, you really have to sort of be careful with how you grow. Now, you know, it's, it can be very productive outdoors out here, but it, at the same time, you know, the seasons are super short. Tomatoes, you know, three or four weeks worth of tomatoes, and that's kind of it. And uh, in, our, in our system, they go, you know, you can have tomatoes coming in year round. And a single tomato plant will last and produce for four months. 
um, it's it's incredible. And it's a binding crop, right? That's how that's how the crop is supposed to produce. We just only know it because the way our seasons work, you know, it only runs it for, you know, four, four weeks, three or four weeks, it's only productive. So and what you just said about that, that's where our AI technology is going to come in, planning 24-7. We, will, we already know we will have excess food to give away for people. And you're in, um, you're in that part of uh, Chicago area. Um, my, one of my co-hosts, uh, Linda Steele, is in the Elk Grove area. So she, she was the number one fitness person, uh, number one and number two. And the person who beat her was her trainer, who trained for the CIA. So my our micro made meals are coming from Chicago because of that. So when we do our follow-up show, you're going to meet three of the co-hosts uh, on the fitness side of things because I want them to see what she created. They're going to love this because what I do, I filter a lot of the things out and they're like, okay, what did you find this week? This is it. And then we bring them on our Tuesday night, huge platform around the world for 220, uh, 220 countries around the world because we have certain things in South America and they're always looking to see what we're doing. And that makes me happy because that means we're doing the right thing. And you're right. And the reason why, the other reason why I like this is because we want to be able to grow this 24 seven year round because of the way that the earth is changing. As you know, that's why the fertile uh, soil is important. That's why the water is important because I have those purifiers. We have those things. We have the water coming from the mountain of Mount Shasta. Uh, I found those companies two years ago and that was fun. And now it took them a while to come on because they couldn't see what we was talking about. Now they see what we're talking about because of the numbers. But you get yeah. right away because you know what it's like to create these things, whether it was on the sporting side of stuff, which I love, the technology side, and to where we are now. Yeah. Guess what? When I'm talking to Patrick Mahone's mom, do you do you not think he needs to eat correctly? Especially after you've had a concussion, oh, yeah. this is where we come in. So that's why I like what's yeah, funny. created. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's funny. That does there is sort of a connection between, you know, my old sports world and and this world in that, you know, in a couple of ways. One, it's they were both very tech based, right? And so, you know, I could sort of lean on some of my old tech contacts and and people in the industry, you know, to help me build this. Because this is an IoT based system. There's a lot of technology, you know, there's three different integrated circuit boards that we've had to build for it, et cetera. Um, so, you know, from that standpoint, I was able to use it. But also you know, athletes are, the professional athletes especially, care a great deal uh, about what they eat. And as you know, in your co from your co-host, you know, to be a professional athlete, just somebody who's, you know, serious about fitness or has built a, a career and a business around fitness and fitness coaching and everything else, it, it makes all the difference in the world, right? I mean, we, we our healthcare system right now is, is really designed, I hate to say it, around the delivery of, of drugs and medicine to, you know, fix what's wrong with us. It's not, done, it's not built around prevention and staying healthy and, you know, there's, there's almost no nutrition education that goes into, you know, medical schools these days. And, and you know, as a consequence, you know, we all get sick and then we treat it, treat, you know, ourselves with medicine when we're sick. We're, we're not figuring out how to stay healthy in the first place. And that's, you know, that is a sort of plant centered, you know, healthy, robust diet is the best way to, to get and stay healthy. And so, um, yeah, athletes get that, trainers get that. Um, and, and there is a natural connection. I'm, I'm not surprised, but I'm thrilled that you guys have one and are, and are using it for those purposes. Well, as you see, you understand why we decided to do this, why we wanted to have 10 acres of this, because we know we're going to have excess, because the water plant that we have on there uh, funds, helps fund the town of Redding in Northern California. Imagine what we're going to do with that 10 acres. And yeah, I'm going to invite yeah. you up sometime after September as we're building up stuff, because things will lessen. It'll be fall, what you'll see, what we're putting together. Because I want everybody, there will be people coming from around the world seeing what we're building up and why we chose certain products and things like that because of where we are, just like you had the idea of create this. And thank you for this because when I'm talking to these athletes, I'm not talking to them about sports. I'm like, how are you going to stay healthy? How is your mind? Because without the proper food, proper water, you're just like everybody else. Your body will wilt away. You know, and I've seen yeah. these people um, when it's happened to these things. I'm 60. I've always joked since I was 30, you know, my sophomore year in high school that I was going to live to 130. But if you could see what we're doing, and I don't have any aches and pains right now, except for a little bit of bad knee, but uh, that's just, I'm just getting older. 
But again, you can see what will happen. We need these things like you created for like Rise Gardens, mm -hmm. the technology that you created in the world of sports. Everything goes together now. And I have to think, I have to take my hat off to you because thank goodness people like yourself are looking out to the future to what everybody else needs. Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say, I, I would have never guessed you're 60. I'm not just saying that. Uh, I would never have guessed that. You look great. Um, well, yeah. I been married, it, it, don't have it, any kids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that may have something to do with it, certainly. But, um, you know, I, I think I should point out, too, uh, because you're obviously doing some great stuff in outdoor growing. And, and I'm, you know, grew up a gardener, love gardening, still do. We don't set this up, you know, as indoor versus outdoor in that, you know, oh, you don't have to go outdoors and get your hands dirty. You can do it all indoors. I don't endorse that at all. I want people out gardening. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. want them going to the farmer's market, buying the local, you know, organic food and supporting that, that ecosystem. This is meant to supplement it. I mean, you know, let's face it. It's also expensive to go to the farmer's market sometime. And, and oh, this yeah. is a nice way to, to you know, supplement that. And, you know, there aren't any farmer's markets going on around here or th those that are, you know, kind of selling stuff that you can kind of, you know, get by or put in a, you know, cold storage or something like that, you know, root vegetables and that sort of thing. So, but, you know, I have fresh greens, you know, year round because of this and mm. I'll start, you know, in March, I'll start uh, planting things that I fully intend to move to my outdoor garden uh, because I can get a two month head start. You know, we really can't go outside until mid May here. So exactly, um, it's a, starter kit in the middle of summer, I switch to things where it's too hot to grow outside and I want to keep, you know, eating my, my greens. I'll, I'll have them in here. Um, you know, it's really a complimentary system to, to growing outdoors, but I, you know, I love it. And it's just a great way to kind of supplement, uh, you know, what you're eating and, and doing, but, um, yeah, we, we applaud gardeners for, you know, getting out and, and planting in soil. There's nothing like it. Uh, Hank, give you social media links. Uh, yeah, so you can find us uh, at Rise Gardens, um, you know, on, uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. If you look up Rise Gardens, we have sort of a public site. And if you bought a garden, we'll invite you to the private site where people, you know, post questions and suggestions and all sorts of stuff. Um, we, uh, we have a, you know, TikTok. We recently, somebody bought a, our system and posted a, a post to TikTok and it blew up. I mean, I think we're on a uh, quarter of a million views or something now wow. um, and growing rapidly. Uh, guy did a really good job with his, with his post and he's pretty happy with his garden. So um, yeah, feel free, please go check us out. We're, we should be out there or, or you know, our website, risegardens.com. Yeah, last question. So while you were locked down, while you were growing things, was there any movies or TV shows you were watching in the middle of this stuff? Why every, you were waiting for everything yeah. to go? Yeah, well, probably not a surprise since I have three sons who, you know, like playing sports and basketball in particular. We live in Chicago. We did the 10 the part Michael Jordan series uh, collectively, um, which was just really, I mean, it was sort of culturally relevant more than just a sports thing right i mean there was it was really interesting uh series so i we did watch that um uh we've been watching schitt's creek which has been kind of a fun one to uh you know binge on and i grew up my dad used to uh read us the james harriet books all things you know all creatures great and small yeah and so uh, public TVS just put out a remake of that series. So I started watching that and then that made me want to go back and watch the original, which I never saw, you know, back from the seventies. And so I'm, I'm kind of doing that. I, we watched uh, Queen's Gambit. That was a fun one too. Excellent um, movie series. You know, kind of a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was a good one. So yeah, we, we've had our share of, of shows that we've been watching. Well, uh, I just started inviting people last week. So like I said, sometime after September, you're going to be invited out, you know, to see what we're creating on the ranch. And don't be surprised who you see who shows up there. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever met Michael Jordan or Oprah or any of these, or, or, or The Rock or any of our friends, but they're coming. Uh, so, because I want them to see what's being created. And I've been telling them for years about this and they're like, okay, now I get a chance to see it. Yep, this is the year. This is the year that we set up. 
So thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I, love I appreciate you coming on. I, I can't wait. I want to do a follow up and have the other three girls on out of the 13. Uh, they're going to love this because one of them is out of, like I said, Linda Steele. She's out of Chicago. And that's she sends us our micro made, macro made meals out of Chicago. And she puts the stuff. She's going to love this. And I hooked her up with two other companies because she represents us for the Midwest. And then the town of Beloit, Wisconsin. Uh, when I'm doing the film festival there, that's called the mini Sundance. Well, we go there, I bring our panel of things. Uh, their film festival is coming up um, the second and the third week of February. So these are the things I start to talk about to that generation because they're planners. They're in that town of yeah. 6,000. Um, Diana Anderson, she's a billionaire. She loves to plan things like this. They don't know about a lot yeah. of these things. So I take pride in introducing people to things like this. It helps the company. That's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, I'd love, I'd love to see it. Can I show you what's in my garden? Can you see it? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, good. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we take particular pride in is that it, you can grow such a variety of things in our garden. So, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got probably 40 little tomatoes coming in there. Wow. Um, we have really, you know, our system is, is got three-part nutrients. We manage pH, we give you sensors. Like, there's a lot of tech built in, but the goal here is we took big, you know, indoor farming systems and shrunk it down. Most people trying to, you know, build systems like this kind of, oh, make it super simple for the consumer. So all they have to do is add water and no nutrients. And, you know, those just don't grow very well. We want something that's going to be healthy and grow really well. So this is a big kale plant that's just been producing like crazy. I make smoothies with it every morning. Uh, wow. This is actually a babe, an eggplant, a little patio eggplant. I don't know if you can see my eggplant down there. Wow. Um, that's incredible. Going crazy. Yeah, time. I've got a pepper plant over there that's got a bunch of peppers, you know, coming in, getting ripe. Um, Swiss hey, chard. I love Swiss chard. So, I've got what's the three biggest Swiss chard plants? What's the biggest that anybody's done so far, um, acre-wise? Could you say anybody yet? Um, I don't know, about, you know, acreage-wise, we have had some massive plants growing in these systems, though. Interestingly, um, somebody uh, planted uh, like a like a bok choy, but it was oh, an wow. Asian variety. And it was, I mean, it, it was huge. It was like this enormous plant she pulled off of her system. Uh, we had people trying squash in our system. This is a, a, a snap pea that actually starts down here and we have a trellising system. So it, it grows all the way up, it's come around and it's now sort of draped all over my system. So, um, you know, vining crops, you can do rooted vegetables here. We do beets and, and um, radishes. We're working on a system for carrots. This is a microgreen system, which is in prototype, but we're about to launch it. So, you know, on one system, you can grow microgreens, vining crops, rooted vegetables, nightshades, which are the tomatoes and peppers, and, the, and then the kales and Swiss shards and herbs. I mean, it's super productive. So it's been really fun. That's incredible. You just gave me an idea. Yeah how to build more up even though we have the acres of the 10 acres of that that's a i like that that's a great thank you for that idea <laughs> yeah. i figured out something this is going to be interesting Good. all right we are social media links right. more time yes uh look for us it's it's at rise gardens and yet that you know that handle should work for us on um, Instagram, um, you know, you can just search for us on, on Facebook at Rise Gardens, et, et cetera, and uh, you should be able to find us. Uh, so, Hank, I want to thank you. And as I always say when I sign off, if you see someone without a smile, this Rise Gardens is definitely going to give you a smile. Uh, please give that yeah. out to someone in the world because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. We'll be reviews more, and we will see you next week.